A synth can look like a keyboard, a series of knobs and patch points, a plugin in your DAW, a single sound source called an oscillator, even just an apple. Just kidding, that's not a synth, that's so weird. A synthesizer, or synth for short, is a collection of different modules used to synthesize or create different sounds. So to understand how to use a synth, we need to understand what these different modules are so we can know how to use them to get the sounds we want. Ah, oh, it just screwed up my settings. When we say modules, we're talking about the smaller components that create, manipulate, or trigger signals within a synth. Things like oscillators, filters, LFOs, envelope generators, etc. Some synths have all these modules laid out easily in a row for you. Others, like modular synths, allow you to pick and choose your modules and connect them in any way you choose. Uh, uh-oh. It's always a little bit surprising to me how many people use synths and don't really know how they work. There's nothing wrong with that, that's fine. You can have a lot of fun just turning dials and knobs or using presets and seeing what comes out. But if you want to be able to consistently get the sound you're going for, it can really help to have a basic understanding of how everything works. There are two basic ways to create the sounds you want on a synthesizer. Using additive, where you shape your sound by adding harmonic content, or subtractive synthesis, when you shape your sound by removing harmonic content with a filter. This is a subtractive synth. So is this, so is this. This is not. This is not either. But that's okay, we'll get there. Hmm? When you're cooking up a juicy new sound or patch on your synth, the main ingredient, it's usually produced by an oscillator. More technically, an oscillator is a module that generates a repetitive signal called a waveform. And there are different types of waveforms we can choose, some smooth and pleasing, others intense and aggressive. To extend the metaphor, imagine we're making a fried chicken sandwich. The waveform is our chicken. It's the main ingredient. From there, how we cook it and what we pair it with, bread, pickles, aioli, those are the other modules like filters, envelopes, effects, etc. we'll use to turn it into a finished dish. Okay, but what is a waveform? How does that all work? And why do certain waveforms sound different from each other? To answer that, let's go on a little journey. Sound moves molecules around in the air or other substances in the form of waves. Not like waves to your neighbor, or waves crashing on a beach, but waves nonetheless. Basically, sound is a bully. It takes some air molecules and pushes them in one direction before they bounce back the other direction. They aren't actually displaced by the sound, they just get beat around by it, like ripples in a pond. We can describe the movement of air molecules in a couple ways. The amplitude measures how far out we push the air molecules from their original position. We generally use this word to describe how loud or intense a signal is. Frequency measures how many times the molecules return to their original position within a certain amount of time, usually a second. One cycle like this in one second is one hertz. A thousand cycles in a second is one kilohertz. Frequency is what gives a sound wave its pitch. The higher the frequency, i.e. the more times it bounces back and forth in a second, the higher the pitch. But wait, there's more. A single note played on the piano contains way more than just the single sound wave. What we hear when we play that note is actually a whole bunch of sound waves of different frequencies at different amplitudes stacked on top of each other. You'll often hear this referred to as a fundamental and overtones. The fundamental refers to the sound wave of the dominant pitch we're hearing. The overtones are the other frequencies or pitches we hear in the background. The specific profile of overtones is what makes a piano sound different from a guitar or an oboe or a synth. So in the case of a synth, the different waveforms we choose on our oscillator describe different patterns of overtones and thus different sounds and timbres we get. There are tons of different types of waveforms you might encounter on your synths, depending what the synth is, but here are some of the most common ones you're likely to see. The first one is a sine wave, the simplest waveform, made up of one single fundamental harmonic. Think of the sound of someone whistling. The triangle wave has more than a single harmonic, so it's a little more aggressive, but still relatively mellow. Kind of makes me think of video games and 8-bit music. The square wave has a hollow woodwind-like tone, 
because they only produce odd numbered harmonics. It's actually similar to the overtone pattern of instruments like clarinets and oboes. A sawtooth wave is the most complex or harmonically dense basic tonal waveform we can start with. The waveform itself looks like the teeth of a saw or ramps which repeat over and over again. The saw shape is somewhat fitting as these sound very aggressive and sharp. And then there's noise. Some synths have noise generators, which allow you to create waveforms that are essentially all frequencies played at the same time. These are great for creating percussive sounds and adding texture to patches. Many synths have at least two or three oscillators, which enable you to blend these different waveforms together and tune them individually, creating all sorts of gnarly interesting sounds. Blending these waveforms together results in endless additional possibilities. And that's the basics of how a synth and a synth's oscillator works. From there, we can start throwing filters and envelopes and LFOs and effects and fried chicken, but that'll have to wait for another day. Unless you're impatient, in which case go to soundfly.com, check out our free demystifying synth series, or become a Soundfly member. Then you get access to our massive advanced synths course. It's one of the most in-depth courses we've ever created. It teaches you how to make pretty much any sound you can imagine using a wide variety of synths. Subtractive, wavetable, FM, even sampling. Or you can just keep following us on YouTube for more videos like this. Good luck with your bleep loops. Thank you.